Hi everyone, hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another Disney Infinity tutorial. Now, I'm in my show jumping uh, toy box level, uh, and uh, I'm going to look at this, and you'll, as you'll notice from the title of this clip, you'll notice that looking at levels in a different light. Um, we've had a lot of fun doing this little challenge, and a lot of you trying to set your times. Uh, and Professor Toybox is one of those guys who's completed his level and he's posted his little clip up on the time. Uh, but he took his little level and he, he did two little things that annoyed me this week. Uh, I'm going to get my revenge. One of them he said my level was a bit dull. His level looked like this. He made it a lot brighter, a lot colourful. Okay. Hey, okay, it's not bad. But I'm from Scotland. I'm, I've got a Pringles name. It's a Scottish name. But I did quite like the fact that he used the water effect. So, okay, it comes down to what you like or what you don't like. But then I thought, okay, not too bad. What else can we do with these type of levels? And then I started thinking, hold on, what do we really mix it up? And this is the same level again. But what I thought I'd do now is I'd make it a medieval level. So I'm using time as my character because we're going to go through some time and I'm going to look at this level in a number of different ways. So as I was thinking about the time scenario, I was thinking, well, if we go back to the two million years ago, they wouldn't have had stable jumps. They wouldn't have had beams to jump across. So then I was thinking, what can we jump across? And then I thought, I know what, we'll jump over lava. So you'll notice I use the ground to plot the places where the lava is. Yeah, And I use the stone from the brave section to put in exactly the same places where the jumps were, where the fences were, so I could still outline the circuit. So this is still the exact same circuits before, but I put an extra twist on it. I thought, let's make it prehistoric. Okay, and I'm going to show you a number of different ones. This is just one of three other levels I'm going to show you, all on the exact same game, but with all a little twist. And that just shows you what you can do with Disney Infinity. You can take a liner and then we can turn it around and knock it on its head. So let's have a little run through how this level looks. This is my favourite out of the additional three that I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to use Spot because I very rarely use him. I don't think many people do. Uh, and it also got me a chance to use some of the uh, power discs I've been dying to use. I've been trying to use the dinosaurs and I haven't come up with anything to use it for. So I've picked three levels where I can use power discs that I haven't used before on the screen. So I'll grab a, a, a one of the dinosaurs. And I've always got to go for the big T-Rex, of course. Uh, and one thing I noticed with the paths, that the T-Rex are quite wide. So the path had to be at least two bricks inside. But what I basically did is I stripped the land away. I kept all the logic where it was, so all the trigger areas didn't. I didn't even move the trigger areas, and then I started putting lava where the, the jumps were, so I could get rid of the hurdles, and I would put the lava in, and then I would then fill in the ground afterwards. And I realised you had to have two uh, two bricks width for these, and then I wanted to make it look like lava spread throughout the whole valley, uh, and then you'll see so you've got double jumps. Yeah, and then I used the uh, the walls, little stones from well to, to pinpoint the circuit. And I've always wanted to use these swinging boulders, but I don't like them just hang in the air. So I had to think something had to be connected to, just in time there. And I used uh, the tree, and I thought, I don't know what, I could have the tree branching out, showing different areas. So, and this one's a lot easier, by the way, because you don't have to do that logic on resetting and turning the. Um, the, uh, the fences on and off so it's, this is a lot easier to set up and all you've got to do is just put the lava ground at the bottom and again you can create different circuits I made the explosions not to be deadly uh, but you can make them de deadly to make that as a, a, an, act, uh, uh, an extra tricky level the only downside is when you jump through we do die at the end because it cuts you out but spots quite high, a bit smoky but he'll get there 119 on my walkthrough so if we just go into design mode, so as you'll see, as we pan round, yeah, you'll see here all those logic areas exactly where the other one is. And you'll see my spinning camera so I can keep the same angle as the same. So like I said, I stripped out all the properties, all the stadiums, all the tracks. I put the lava down and then I just built the landscape going around it and using the uh, dinosaur power disks for the background. But then I just then built a tree over the top but I didn't actually remove any of those trigger areas I just built around it and it worked quite well I've had a lot of fun at this level so I'm going to use spot and try and set an official time and just to prove it I'd set one of these little buttons here so I could 
power up any uh, dinosaurs if I wanted to. Right, so let's try this again. And again, no logic's changed to the previous one that I showed you uh, a couple of weeks ago. As soon as you go through the first gate, then the timer starts. Right, so this time I'm going to try and go a little bit faster. Ready? Let's see what we can do. And you've got to time your runs because those swinging things can get in the way. Get up. We ain't got much daylight. And the little bits of lava in the way I mean you have to jump a lot more regularly. There's a lot more little jumps in the way you can cut corners if you wanted to. And it's just shows you that you can just... I wanted to take one idea and I think it's because of the time challenge. We all had to think of different ideas to do with time and then as I saw uh, Professor Toybox little touches to his level and they were good little touches by the way I did like them so I'm only joking though I was offended anyway I tell you who was offended was my daughter and her time but I've got a thing about the times coming towards the end of the clip so stay tuned to the end we have some new times from other users as well so we're going to do an official rundown who is in the top three spots at the moment now I was going to do really well but I hit those flipping things and that did hold me up. Got a bit carried away. But I have to say, I love this level. I just love the thing and I can use the dinosaur, so... Oh. I was quite pleased how that turned out. Right, now I'm going to turn back into Mr. Time because we're now going to go to another um, another version of this level. Okay, So I was then trying to think, okay, so what can we do slightly different? So I was then trying to think, well, what other power disc can I use? And I thought, I know what I can use. I can use my elephant power disc. So then I was thinking Persian. What would you do in a Persian time? So this is my Persian toy box version. And so you'll see here, you'll notice I've got little archways, I'm using pillars. Instead of the stone, I've got pillars, but there's pillars I can put things on the roof, so I've then got the roof side. Now, my original plan was this. I was thinking, how do I do this differently? Well, I'll, I'll have the uh, elephants run through, I can use my Boo power disc, never use that one, and we'll do the same circuit. But again, I, just a slight variation of it again, got the palace walls, just to show you a little circuit, I've got little archways instead. But you'll know there's no jumps in this, okay? There's no jumps at all. So let me just run through the circuit and we'll use a boo to do it. So I've changed into Aladdin, of course, obviously. Right, and when we use a boo, I'm just going to run through with the things. Now, elephants do jump. In fact, I don't think they do jump, actually. You'll see a little bit of a weird scenario. And the problem I had with this is I didn't know what to do with the elephant. So there are some uh, destructible pieces that you can connect to a path. So what I thought you could do is, my first plan with this was to use elephants to bash your way through. So you had to bash your way through and shoot you use things to shoot the walls down because elephants like ran through things. You like my little tunnel there? I thought it was quite good. Uh, but it was really slow and was quite crummy. But then I thought, hold on. I was using these archways to fill in the area so you had to dig through and then I thought I know what to do this is not anything to do with a, a, a rideable uh, this is not to do with an animal event although my elephant is good I thought no I don't know what so you'll notice these pillars that now have uh, bridges across them so they are now gaps so that meant that the user has to go through there so where these pillars are wide open massive big so I thought I know what we'll, we'll do a different variation and let's do a different complete different twist it's not going to be a show jumping event hence there's no jumps yeah but as you can see the layout is identical I quite like that little four pillar section I thought that was quite good and you see a little post there at the end which is all quite good Ta -da! so let's go back to the start line and let's show you what this one is now this level I didn't actually like uh, to start with because I found it very tricky so it could be fine annoying but actually the more I've played with it the more I actually got used to it but it, you do need some fine skills and my fine skills are not that good because this is not to do with animals this is a magic carpet assault course okay so come on Alan get your carpet out and again another power disc I haven't used so we switch on to our power disc there we go and now that was why we have to go through the areas so we have to go through You'll see I'm trying to fly it through. My flying start with was pretty good. I was quite pleased. The start with, by the way, was horrendous. 
this is about like 15 goes but then I still got to like it's quite good so the tunnel through the thing and then just couldn't do it there like completely lost it so once you've gone wrong it's a disaster yeah but it's not a bad little game and it does take a little bit of practice getting the turns in but this is my magic uh, carpet assault course but you have to go through the arches, you see, you have to go down and through, which is where it becomes tricky. So it's not jumping, it's flying. And then my flying skills aren't too good. I believe Papa H's are quite good, so check, check out. But again, another little twist of the same circuit. Flying it through. That's a good turn, that one. Back through the big arches. <laughs> How much space do I need? I could do it. I'm going to say, ah, oh, crud. <laughs> Because that is obviously the word of the month. But there you go. So my flying carpet version. Which I didn't think was too bad. I did a 57 even with all those slow times. So that wasn't too bad on there. I didn't mind that one. But still not as good. My, my prehistoric one I think was better. So we'll turn back into time. And we'll travel through to another thing. So then I was thinking. So we've done a flying uh, carpet one. right? We've done jumping lava. Where should we go now? And guys... I'm going to send you back to the future. I've always wanted to say it. So while we're using time, we're going to travel to the future now. What would they do in the future? So in the future, we are doing laser beams. Yeah? The stakes of show jumping has gone up a level. Okay? We're going to go... If you don't make it, you get sliced into a thousand pieces. It's now the Hunger Games. Yeah? So all I've done, I use basic blocks... And this level's really easy, by the way, because you just strip out everything. I just use the basic blocks and use my Tron discs. Yeah. And I just slot them in. And then these patterns you just put onto a path and you set them across. So my ideal plan here is because I wanted to use my Tron characters, was to use a light cycle. But sadly, it's too compact to use the light cycle. It just didn't work and I was like hating it. So I thought, well, what else can I use then instead of using a horse? Because it's the future. So I get my favourite uh, character, I do like him, okay, do a little reset button, which sets all the clocks. This, my friends, is a hoverboard. As we're doing a bit of Back to the Future, I thought it's a hoverboard set. And here we go. So we jump it on, and you've got now time. So the beam, they, laser beams are flying through, because the hoverboard is just controllable. Not always, as you can see, I struggled here. But you can turn it a lot more than the light cycle. So these bars are moving back and forth. Got to time it. Oh, no, that wasn't bad. You got a bit. Um, my youngest daughter said I cheated there and therefore should be DQ'd. I don't think it was too bad. Somehow, I don't know how I survived that one. But you do die. But again, it can take the same layout, just a different type of game altogether. How cool is this? So if you come up with any different variations as well, let me know what you come up with. What power disc did you do? Did you do horse riding? Right, I'm the last guy. Ta da <laughs> There you go. So that's not too that's not too bad. It's a lot easier with those things and you get, and you've got if you don't use haven't got that power disc, you can use the um, Incredibles hoverboard, which is a very similar thing as well. So I'm just gonna go into design mode just to show you. That is there. So again, I stripped all the all the land out like I mentioned and just then put the options in. But I just wanted to show you that. Where do you find the laser beams? Well, the laser beams come under the platform because it took me ages to find these. I knew they existed. But if you go to Game Maker and you go all the way across, they're very hard to see. You can't actually see them, but they're these things here. Horizontal and they're automatically switched on and they constantly move. So you don't have to do anything about logic. All you've got to do is position them to a path, which you can do. And all I did was link them to the path like I did with the fences, but you don't have to switch them on. So again, you had to save that logic. And away you go. That was it. Right, one last thing. If you've been following our time challenge event with a number of other creators, Professor Toybuck also created this level and he has now got the world record. Well, as of Saturday, that record was beaten by JetBlast190. Now, his Professor Toy Box was a 54.06. Jet Blast 190, he did a 54.09. And then he took it with a 53.92.
Well, I thought, okay, right, my daughter was heartbroken that her record's on, so she came back in and has had another crack on it this morning. Now, we looked at different ways to try and tune it through. We discussed it. We took it very seriously, like I say. It's, 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 it's our event. We need to be back in charge. So she's got a little, t little tips and tactics if you're going to try and get the record. You'll notice, obviously, she's lining herself up to try and get a straight run at it as possible. Very tight corners. Really tight corners. Keeping them very tight. We now have the water gate, which actually makes that jump a little bit longer from my previous one. She was doing really well here. Very tight this time. Took it really tight. I thought it was over long, but got it back. I need to cut in tight around the corner. It's a good time, it's a good time. And I'd just like to let you know, Jet Blast was number one on Saturday, but on Sunday, the 15th of November, the title goes back to the youngest Pringle, with a 50.65. She has that in homework all week, by the way, so thank you for that. Uh, so let me know if you beat the times, and let me know what you think of uh, our levels. But as you go, we go from this one, which was my version with the Scottish theme, to Professor Toybox look with the bright colours, which I quite like as well. Then we then turned it on its head and we did our Jurassic version. And then we did our Persian version. My, my Jurassic version I prefer better, I quite like that one. But then we did the Persian one with the palaces and all the tools that I hadn't used before. And then we took everyone, the last thing we did, we then took everyone back to the future and we did our futuristic one. There you go. That's it. Hope you like that. That's my clip for now. I'll hopefully get another clip out to you again soon, guys. All stay safe and well. Uh, let us know which out of those you thought was your favourite one from what you could see. And let me know if you're going to do any variations yourself. Any different things, let me know. Chuck your comments down. Love to hear from you. Stay safe, guys, and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye.